Hello, welcome to another Assessments in Canvas Learning Management System video guide. Today we're going to talk about the second assessment tool on our list, and that's the rubrics. In this assessment matrix, we can see that rubrics and speed grader have some quite similar functionalities in terms of marking student online submissions and writing comments or feedback. Although faculty have the option to use or not use them, rubrics are especially important in grading student paper as it can be integrated into the assignment and aids in marking submissions objectively and transparently. By the end of this video, you will know how to mark student online submissions using a fixed criteria or set of criteria and a rating scale. I will show you how to leave written comments in each criteria of the rubric as well as a general comment on the assignment. We will also showcase creating a simple group presentation rubric that you can attach to an assignment. We will also cover the pros and cons of using rubrics, some challenges and limitations, and maybe one or two relevant case scenarios. So let's get started. Once again, for demonstration purposes, I'm acting as a teacher of a recently concluded course, and we are going into a student submission, a weekly journal, and show you how you can mark a submission like that using a rubric. In order to see the rubric used side by side with an assignment, you have to go into the speed grader tool, and this will allow you to see on one side a student submission and the other, the rubric. So here is the speed grader once again. And the rubric, if it's integrated into the assignment, can be viewed by clicking this button, View Rubric. Here we can see parts of that rubric. Now drag this bar to the left so you can expand the rubric section and see all the criteria and ratings. Now, any rubric has multiple criterias and also ratings of 1 to 3 or 1 to 5, sometimes 1 to 10. We have about five criteria for marking this paper and also ratings of 0 to 5, 5 to 10, all the way to 25. 25 being the highest for every criteria. Rubrics are just like scorecards. If a submission mostly satisfies a criterion, just click on a rating cell and the rubric will award the highest point of that rating range and will auto-populate the grade box. Now, if the submission somewhat satisfies a criterion and you want to award a point within the stated range, you may type the score in the grade box and that will highlight the rating without changing the grade you've awarded. Don't forget to leave comments within that criterion so that students will understand what they had done well with their assignment. So for the next two to three criteria, I'll go ahead and click specific cells in the rubric and award points. The points column automatically adds up the marks and gives a final grade to the assignment. Don't forget to hit save at the end. Finish up with a general comment at the bottom of the section and hit submit to share with the student the rubric and feedback you gave. Probably the most overwhelming thing about rubrics is creating the rubric itself. Now, if you go into the rubric section, it is not an actual assessment tool. It is where you store all your rubrics. So here I'm showing you how to create rubrics for your assignments. We went into the rubrics page and we clicked add rubric. Depending on your assessment requirements and student learning outcomes, your rubric can have multiple criteria. The rating scale determines the level of ease or difficulty in meeting that outcome. I am creating a 5x5 five five rubric scorecard here for group presentations. And as soon as I have one criterion drafted, I simply duplicate that criterion so I have format consistency in my rubric. I rename that criterion duplicate and I also put in a long description so that students understand what their submission is being evaluated against. You'll see that the rating scale is also neat and consistent and has a nice format to look at. 
It's best practice to have similar rating scales across all your criteria to come up with an aesthetically looking rubric like this. So we have a nice looking rubric, but perhaps the most challenging part about it is that we have to put in descriptors for each rate in the scale so that we are transparent with how we mark student submissions. Now, if you already have a document with your rubric just like this, I simply cut and paste the descriptors in each cell of the rating scale, and that helps save time and effort and this is also why having a rubric in the excel sheet or pdf or word document will help to curb the time for creating rubrics in canvas When I'm done, I click Create Rubric, and that saves my draft in the Rubrics page of my course. So now we are ready to attach that rubric to an assignment. I went into the Assignments page, and I created a new assignment by clicking that blue button, Add Assignment. And I'm just filling in the uh, important information for this submission and making sure that I save that assignment. So I see the Add a Rubric button and I click that. I'm not going to create a new rubric. Instead, I click Find the Rubric and I look for that rubric within my course. And finally, I click Add this rubric and it integrates that scorecard in the assignment. So let's check in the student view what that assignment looks like. Make sure you publish that assignment so that it's visible to the students. And here is that assignment with a rubric attached to it. And this clearly communicates to your students how their assessment will be marked. In this video, I showed you how to mark student online submissions using a rubric with clearly stated criteria and a rating scale, and we did that in the speed grader. I also showed you how to leave written feedback on that rubric. Rubrics are not useful for direct annotation of assignment submissions, as well as adding media feedback. That can be done in the speed grader, which is in the previous video. Here's a link to more information about Canvas rubrics. Thank you for joining me today.